stories we lift each other Give hope to push us further And encourage one another Tabitha Brown is a prime example that God's delay is definitely not his denial. To some, Tabitha was just an internet sensation, but in actuality, Tabitha Brown has been preparing her whole life for this very moment. Tabitha studied acting in grade school, as well as doing community theater in her hometown of Eden, North Carolina. She later moved to LA and landed parts in independent films and shows such as Will and Grace. But after becoming a vegan, in order to try to conquer an unknown illness, her whole life changed when she did a video that went viral about a sandwich from Whole Foods. This wife and mother of three later became an influencer for the brand. She later went on to have her own seasonings. She wrote a book called Feeding the Soul. She has her own children's show on YouTube originals called Tab Time. She launched her own line of clothing and home goods at Target. And she made an appearance as an actor on shows such as The Connors and Showtime's The Shy. She has a hair care product called Donna's Recipe. She even has a show on the Food Network called Complicated. And she has just released her very own cookbook called Cooking from the Spirit. Tabitha shows us that you can conquer anything with just a word from the Lord. All right, so this episode of Behind the Scenes Beauty is special to me because this young lady feels like a little piece of home. I was reading her book and it took me back to everything that I grew up from my church to the, the, the people in your neighborhood, all of that stuff. We have with us, she's an actress, she's an author, she's an entrepreneur, she's a comedian, she's... <laughs> She's all things to all people. She's everybody's mama. She's their marriage coach. She's everything. <laughs> we have with us Tabitha Brown. Aw, thank you. How are you? I'm amazing. We have with us Tabitha Bonita Brown. That's <laughs> that when, I, when I would hear you read that in your book, because I was listening to it audible, yeah. that was so hilarious to me because they're really, I said, oh, she really from down uh -huh, where I'm yeah. from. Because yeah. I'm from Virginia. Yeah. And you're from Eden, North Carolina. Right. And right there so, on the border. Yeah. So yeah. we like... Where I'm from is like 40, 30, 40 minutes. But whenever we yeah. go to Greensboro, we got to go right by your house. And yes. so yeah. um, it's very interesting. We were just talking earlier about all the little stuff we grew up. She used to come to this little store called Value City. Indeed. That <laughs> and that's where I did all my back to school shopping, <laughs> holiday shopping, put everything on layaway. Okay. It, that was when layaway yeah. was the thing. You had to go put everything on layaway, go make your payments, get all the stuff out. Yep, for school and for the holidays. <laughs> Absolutely. Gotcha. Okay, so on Behind the Scenes Beauty, the real purpose of the show is for us to talk about the beauty of the journey. Mm -hmm. um, you had in your book, your first book, you talk about really basically your journey that you had as in your career where everybody thought you were this overnight wonder. <laughs> <laughs> but they failed yeah. to realize there yeah. was 23 years in between over and night. Right, so. <laughs> exactly. I'd be like, it's 24 hours or 24 years, however you want to look at it. But yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, so I'm, I do want to delve, because like I said, I know you probably have talked this story so many times, but... I do want to tell the people a little bit about your beginnings and like you're from Eden, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Born you, and raised. Born and raised. Uh -huh. You have siblings? One sister. Okay. Yeah, one sister, okay. Tasha. Okay. And yeah. so you, you grew up in a two-parent household? Yes, until I was in the ninth grade. Okay. And my parents uh, separated. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was growing up in Eden, North Carolina like for you? It was really good. Right? I mean, it's country living. I lived in Stoneville. Okay. That's where I, you know, where my home was. You went to school and everything in Eden. Right. But I lived in Stoneville, which is the country country. Right, right, right. Um, and so, you know, we had a pond in the backyard, you know, over in the in the circle. Um, so I wasn't vegan growing up, so I was fishing and <laughs> I was in the woods and um, I was doing all the, the, the things, you know, I loved being outside. That's when kids really like to play outside. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a tomboy, so I was climbing trees. I was playing football. I was catching lightning bugs. I was, you know, catching turtles. I was doing all, anything I could to be outside. I just love being outside. Uh, and I spent a lot of time with my great, great, or no, not my great, great, but my great grandfather, which was my granny's uh, daddy on all my right. mama's side. And uh, so I spent a lot of times like going to farms and being around the animals and uh, always really had a love for animals. Uh -huh. uh, it's so funny that now I would be vegan, of course, uh -huh. but 
Uh, so I spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, like, Hearing old people talk and telling stories, spent a whole lot of time at church. Right, right, right. Right, grew up in the yes. church. Even when my mom and daddy won't go to church, they won't they save won't send you. They sent us to church, <laughs> right? They won't save, but they said we're going to have to look they out for these children. They going to send you. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so I always went to church with my granny. Uh-huh. Uh, and, you know, Sunday school, Bible study, all of that. Uh, that's where I learned to play the tambourine and do all those things. Uh-huh. I think I talk about that, too, in my book with my uh-huh. granddaddy, John. And uh, then, in, you know, school was great. It's small town, so everybody went to the same school, really. Uh, but that's where I learned to, like, perform and do theater and theater arts and musicals and all that stuff. And uh, I probably have worked. Like, I always tell people, Tab is never, ever ashamed of work. Right, right, right. I love work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I probably started working when I was about six years old. Uh-huh. And my job was, like, working with my granddad emptying the trashes at the church. Uh-huh. Or cleaning out the ashtrays at offices, because that's where he used to he used to clean office oh, buildings, okay. and he would clean the church. And my daddy would clean the post office, so okay. that was like they like night jobs. Uh-huh. So we would have to go with him, and my job would either be cleaning the ashtrays. That's when people used to smoke at their desk, at right, work, right, 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 office. So at I mean, first, I thought you were talking about they were smoking, because you know, in Baptist churches, you know, they go outside and they smoke. So <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> in the country, they, you and know. And they, they do. They, they be standing right outside. They, they do. They will take a smoke break. Right. And so, because um, the Lord don't see them outside. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what they be thinking. But, um, but no, so I spent a lot of time, like, learning work ethic at, at a very young age. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then by the time I was, you know, 15, I, I was working at Taco Bell. I worked at Winn-Dixie. Y'all had Winn-Dixie. You know, oh, Winn-Dixie. yes, we had a Winn-Dixie. I, that was my first, Food like, after Taco Bell, it was Winn-Dixie, and then it was in <laughs> I fashion. actually worked at Winn-Dixie, too. Yes, yeah, honey. That was, that was my job job yeah. right there, okay? And then when I was like, you know, I want to do something in fashion, so I need a, a better job. Uh, I started working at It's Fashion. That was like the little clothing store, kind of like Kato's. We had a, yep, sure did. We had a It's Fashion, Yeah, and I did that. So, you know. <laughs> that's where you go get your club clothes. And listen, that's where you would have got them club clothes. Honey, you got to go to Club Zero, go to Greensboro on Tuesday yes. nights in the summertime. Uh, but, you know, it was all about family and, mm-hmm. and friends. It was very small, but uh, I had a great childhood. I, I love where I'm from. All my family is still there in mm-hmm. Eden and Reesville. How often um, do you go back to visit? Shoot, I just came back. Oh, really? Um, like five or six times a year, really. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm there very often. Okay. Mm-hmm. How? So I was reading your book, and you were talking about wanting to act. Like, because for me too, like when we come from these small towns, there is no blueprint to that stuff. We don't right. have, you know, people that are doing this. So we like, oh, this is how we start. Right. So first of all, how did you even acknowledge? this gift of wanting to be an actress, and then where do you go from there? Well, for me, it started very young, mm-hmm. right? From watching the Cosby Show, mm-hmm. growing up, and uh, I used to tell my mom, I want to be Rudy's friend. I uh-huh. want to be, you know, the, the person that ring the doorbell <laughs> next and come in, I want to say something, <laughs> and then I want to come home. Right, and right, so right. she was like, oh, that means you want to be an actress. And so from that very young age, hearing an actress, I was like, oh, I got to figure out how to be an actress. So I remember I had a music teacher named Miss Stanley, and I remember going to school that like next week and telling her, Miss Stanley, I want to be an actress. My mama said, I, I, I want to be an actress. And so she was like, oh. So she started putting me in all the like little lead roles or giving me, you know, lines in like the school plays and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I did musicals and did all that anytime it was available. I did that uh, in church plays. I always volunteered. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to always be in front of the camera or, you know, whatever I could do. Uh, and then community theater happened, like high school, I was in drama, and then I got introduced to community theater. I did community theater, and then back in the day, they used to, and I, I every now and then, I still hear them, and I be like, Lord, they still do that. You hear on the radio, they be like, coming to Greensboro, like, uh, Los like Angeles or Hollywood scouting, <laughs> scouting and yeah, 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 John yeah, yeah. Casablanca, yeah, yeah, like, John. <laughs> oh, honey, all these things, and I would be begging my mom and daddy, mom, y'all gotta take me, I gotta go mm-hmm. see, you know, mm-hmm. and we would go, of course, it'd be scams, uh, and they'd be trying to take your take money, you to school. all that stuff. And uh, Buster Brad actually went with me on one of them. It's so funny because I even at that age I was still trying to do it. You know, early twenties. Gotcha. Okay, so let me explain. Buster Brown was a uh, <laughs> DJ on the radio for one or two jams in Greensboro, North Carolina. Yes. And so yep. those was our radio station and picked up in my part of Virginia. Right. So that's what she means. Michelle. And because I used to I used to work with him too. She used to so. work with him. Uh, but I would I would try anything mm-hmm. that I could. And I just knew I had this desire to perform. It was just inside of me. It wasn't something that anybody in my family ever did. Mm -hmm. It was nothing that I ever saw anyone personally do. It was just, which is how I know that that's what God had purpose for me, because it was just, even to this day, it lives inside of me. Mm -hmm. 
desire to entertain, to perform. If I go too long without doing it, it's like I don't feel well. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, something feel like it's missing because I haven't did the thing that lives inside of me. Mm -hmm. um, so I always, you know, pursued it that way. And then uh, when it was time for me to go to college, I was doing fashion in high school as well. I was mm -hmm. making clothes. And so I went to school for fashion design for mm -hmm. a little bit. But then I was like, this ain't it, and, yeah. you know, dead, I'm wasting your money, come on, get me. <laughs> right, right, right. And I applied to Columbia College in Chicago for performing, uh, performing arts, got accepted, uh -huh. uh, but then didn't get, my financial aid wasn't approved, so mm -hmm. I was like, Lord, I can't go to Chicago now, now what I'm gonna do? So I ended up moving to California in 98, and was just like, I ain't got no plan. Right. You know, I, my mama knew somebody, or didn't really know him, but I uh, moved out there, and I was in like Orange County, not, not in LA, right, not right, nowhere right. near Hollywood. Right. And doing no acting, I was like struggling, working two jobs, this lady taking all my money. Um, right, <laughs> yeah. You had, the, you had the story, everybody don't realize. Had, There's yes. always the story Ooh. that you got to go through to get there. It'd be a, a, story, a struggle story, okay? You, you know, yeah. if you're, when I was reading your book, it felt like you were very much so like uh, uh, in the Bible, thrown from pit, you were in the pit, <laughs> the Potiphar's house to the prison, and then you finally made it to the palace. Like, Listen. And uh, hearing your story too, a lot of it is, you are a prime example of the direction that God takes you is never the way you envision it. Because mm -hmm. I could imagine you thought you would go to LA, you'd come across somebody, somebody would talk about how pretty you are and that you should be in movies and Yeah, stuff. I, I was like, they waiting on me out there. Because <laughs> I done prepared my whole life for this, honey. Won't nobody wait on tab. But you get out, and yeah. then, so you end up getting pregnant with... I moved, when well, we moved back to Greensboro. Okay. Right. Because what made you go back to Greensboro? Because we were living in Orange County and the the lady was taking all my money gotcha. and I was not anywhere close to LA. We couldn't even save because gotcha. it was so expensive. Gotcha. And so uh, Chance was like, babe, we need to move back to you know North Carolina because it's cheaper mm -hmm. and we can save up money for a year and then move to LA where you can really pursue your dreams. Uh, and that one year turned into five and ended up getting pregnant and uh, was working jobs and uh, got married, had a house, all those things. So what was your mental state in that time? Because the way performing and being an actress is for you is so embedded mm -hmm. in you. What are you thinking in these five years that time is going on? Because two, yeah. I just want to say, I know when we envision our life, we think it has to happen when we're young. Mm -hmm. Like it's something about youth and it happening at a certain time where you feel right. like, oh yeah. You know, time is, is We think we ain't got away. no time, honey. We just, we, we, we be in such a rush for it to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't even know anything. Yeah. And that's the thing. I didn't even know myself. Right. Um, but my mind was, you know, in the first year, I really thought like, okay, we gonna, you know, we gonna go back. And then as time went on, then, I, you know, after I got pregnant, I was just like, I missed out. I convinced myself of that. I was like, stop thinking about it, because you can't do it now. You know, I really believed that. I was like, you know how it is, you get pregnant young, yeah. in a small town, you got a job, y'all yeah. together, get married, you know, y'all got a little house. We had like a nice little three bedroom house mm -hmm. we had found um, that we was renting out for mm -hmm. six fifty a month. It was like, okay, this was this Listen. us, you know. <laughs> Lord, if I can get you <laughs> now, okay, Lord, <laughs> well, three bedroom, yes. oh, sign me up for it. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so we was just like, I, I convinced myself I couldn't have it no more. Mm -hmm. You know that I messed up, mm -hmm. and so I was gonna have to be all right with it. So that, where did you click? It, it For me, it was when God woke me up one morning. It felt like an earthquake happened in Greensboro. My bed shook, and I it startled me. I woke up, and I heard a voice that sounded like thunder. Mm -hmm. And the voice said, this is not the life I planned for you. And I was, like, scared. Mm -hmm. And I got on my knees, and I started praying. I, I was like, God, if this is you speaking to me, I need you to show me a sign today. Because mm -hmm. if not, I think I'm losing my mind. And I told my husband what happened. I think he did think I was crazy. And uh, later that day, we were on our way to the mall, and that's when Buster Brown came on the radio. And he said, hey, this is Buster Brown. I got a new TV show with the WB Network, and I'm holding auditions looking for a female co-host. And I knew that was my sign. I went crazy in the car. I was like, that's my sign. I got to go to this audition. And I went to the audition. I booked that job. And that was my first audition. And that's when I started dreaming again. So I was 
co-hosting and producing my own segments, uh, interviewing celebrities when they would come to town. My first interview was LL Cool J. Oh, wow. And, um, Were you nervous? I, you know what? I, was, I wasn't that, as much as nervous. I was like, I can't believe this is happening right, right, type right. of thing, you know? Right, right, right. Um, but nervous in like a good, like humble way. Yeah. Like, wow, I right. get to do this type of thing. Um, and then as, as time went on, you know, I interviewed Nas, Lil' Kim, like anybody who came King. for homecoming yeah. or anything, it was like, that was North my Carolina job. North Carolina too. Exactly. Okay. Come on, you know. <laughs> right. I ain't even go to Egg, but exactly. uh, Right. Me either, but I'm an honorary. Right. We're honorary. honorary. Yeah. honorary. Yeah. I went okay. to the homecoming. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so I did that, and that's what opened up that gate inside of me to be mm -hmm. like, oh, wait, I can still dream. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a year, and then I told my husband, it's time, now it's time to go back to L.A. Because I started doing theater again in the community in Greensboro. Uh, I started going to Wilmington to do auditions. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I got an agent in Greensboro. Oh. I was with Maryland's. Okay. That was an agency there. And, um, and they were getting you legit work. Yeah, they would. Yep, I started auditioning there, uh -huh. and I would go, you know, they would give me... Uh, auditions. I had to go to Wilmington sometime to Raleigh to go to the auditions. Uh -huh. That was before self tapes. Okay, I was okay. driving hours. <laughs> um, and then I also would go to uh, Wilmington to do extra work on One Tree Hill. Oh wow! Just so I could be on a set. Yeah. Because I was like, Lord, I need to know what it's like to be on a full production. Like I need to see a real, true television show. Uh -huh. How it works. Like what does this guy do? What does this woman do? Uh -huh. um, and so I would go. You know, I would drive three hours each way, right, to go and, and do extra work. So. So yeah. when you um, you tell Chance, you realize it's time to go to LA, and you tell Chance that y'all it's time for y'all to move back, and Chance tells you, no, nah, y'all ain't going. Yeah, he was like, nah, babe, we can't do that. <laughs> so what do you say to, especially because where we come from again, we come from the South, where it's that whole, you know, you, you listen to the man because he's the... <laughs> so how are you managing, like, okay, I'm trying to keep this relationship together, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I know... I, how does that work? Well, I just told <laughs> listen, I told Chance, I said, okay, well, listen, I don't know, first of all, I don't know what kind of money I thought I had, <laughs> but I was like, you can stay here, uh -huh. and I'll go there, and I'll live both places, I'll come back and forth. And he said, no, nah, we're not doing that. Right. <laughs> I was like, but I have to go. Mm -hmm. Like, I've heard God speak to me. I've done all this stuff in this last year. Like, he is telling me something is calling me to Los Angeles and I have to go. Mm -hmm. So he was like, all right, but we got to plan it. And so I was like, okay. So we put a plan together and we saved up money for about like six or eight months. And we can't, we had like $8,000. Oh wow. And then we moved in 2004. Um, so I'm trying to like, cause your story is a deep story. There's so many parts. So I, I want to ask this question. Um, what life lessons from your prior jobs, like the jobs you did through Winn Dixie, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people that feel like, for us that did not go to college, I didn't go to college, mm -hmm. um, but we have um, life that becomes college for us. That's right. What are some of the things that you encountered that you feel like were large lessons for where you are now, as far as it comes to this thing of Hollywood? Because you, you, you get to, you know, we're going to go back to that part, but I just wanted to know this part now. Like, you know, you experience Hollywood and then you realize like, oh, that was the reason why I went through this. Like I used to be in the church so it, mm -hmm. uh, and I was a youth pastor. So it taught me how to work with different personalities, how you have to mm -hmm. speak to people, how you have to manage people. Also working in a salon, you know, all of these different things. So when I got to L.A., there was a different way I knew how to manage. Mm -hmm. What are some of those little lessons that you feel like when you look back, this is why I had to, oh. since you've experienced Hollywood and in the space that you're in now? I mean, it's a lot of different lessons. Ooh, I, too many to count. But I think the biggest one is, what you know, realizing that I never really had to change who I was. Mm -hmm. You know, working in like corporate America, working in jobs. I, you know, I worked in call centers mm -hmm. and uh, I worked at staffing agencies and uh, contract manufacturing. I did shipping logistics. I did all these jobs, um, but I was always like conforming. Mm -hmm. And I would code switch and change my voice because most time I'm the only black or mm -hmm. only black woman. Uh, or it, I was just told I sounded ignorant or too country. So I was trying to like speak better mm -hmm. or cover mask my accent especially even when i got into acting in la mm -hmm. i was told that and so 
um, I realized that I never had to do that. Right, mm -hmm. this tab works. Yeah, <laughs> just being who I am, clearly, is fine. Um, but I learned so many other things. Like I worked for a contract manufacturing company for like skincare and um, all these different products, and so I saw how it was manufactured. I saw how it was distributed. I, like I saw how it was created. Like all these different things, how to do testing, and it's all the things that I do now for my own business with Donna's yeah. recipe. Right, and I remember thinking when I used to be there, like, Lord, why you got me at this job? I feel so stuck. I, you know, I want to be able to leave here so I can act full time. And God was just, He was like, creating a journey for me so that I could look back and be like, Oh, I know how to do this. I can create my own business and do this because I learned how to do this. You know, that was my school. Exactly. Right, because I was exactly. there for almost five years, so I, I learned a lot there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one thing and, you know, but the conforming is really the, the biggest lesson I've ever uh, learned in my life to like know that I don't have to do that no more. And I love that about you because yeah. you were unapologetically <laughs> Tabitha Brown, yeah. Tabitha Bonita Brown. Okay. Does that get on your name when I do that? Uh, no. <laughs> How do okay. know? All right. Okay. So going back. So you end up moving to LA. Mm -hmm. um, you start to get in some roles, you start to feel like your career is picking up mm -hmm. and everything. Now, <laughs> marriage is about communication, all right? And from what I gather, Tony, you don't communicate. Now this woman will go to the end of the earth for you and all she is asking you to do is keep her in the loop. Mm-hmm, that's right. Is that too much to ask? I mean, this woman bore children for you. Children she's now raising while well, you off at work. Buying pool tape. See you. As a volunteer, you are not allowed to touch patients. Of course, I understand. You're here to observe and assist the physician on duty. In this case, Dr. Jackson. Sorry, did you say Dr. Jackson? Mm -hmm. He runs a free clinic downtown and fills in for us on Saturdays. There he is. Me and my baby, we out here doing it. You know, I, I want to take uh, other people and bring them into where we at. Let them know that they can, they can do the same. They can do the same thing. Then you have a little dry spell, and then you start to get sick. Mm -hmm. And once again, it feels like you're definitely not going the direction that you should be going. Mm -hmm. And you talk about depression. How were you going, how were you managing this, these depressed moments? And I really wasn't managing it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I was faking it mm -hmm. as much as I could. Um, I spent a lot of time by myself, like, you know, during the daytime, because I was on disability for a year. Oh, wow. And so, so did you know it was depression? Did you did you realize, like, I think I'm, or? Oh, yeah, because I, I realized that I was sad, because it was two things. I was sick, and I didn't know what was wrong with me. And the doctors couldn't tell me what was wrong with me, and so I was sad about it. You know what did I'm saying? Did you ever find out? what it was mm -hmm. all you just know is still to this day oh, they wow. just they just told me they knew it was something autoimmune uh -huh. i had one doctor tell me well when we can't figure it out we tell you that you have fibromyalgia and i said well i ain't gonna just take a diagnosis because you can't figure it out <laughs> and so because right. i remember when they told my mama she had fibromyalgia oh. and she ended up having als and she died from it right and so i know they just they they diagnose women stuff. with that a lot mm -hmm. because they can't tell them what's wrong with them mm -hmm. and so um but no i never figured it out and the doctors never figured it out. And when you know something ain't right, mm -hmm. but everybody telling you that you're fine, mm -hmm. it does something to your mind. I mean, there was times I really thought like, oh, I'm gonna die. I'm a, I, I got the same thing my mom had, you mm -hmm. know, cause that, your mind was starting to tell you anything. Mm -hmm. um, and that caused me to go to a really dark like space, mm -hmm. like mentally. And so um, I was seeing a therapist and I was on medication, mm -hmm. and I tried a couple different medications. And I, listen, I always tell people, listen, you you do your medicine if that's what you need to do. <laughs> right. But I, I also know that some medication, if you ain't already crazy, will take you there. <laughs> gotcha. Because honey, they prescribed me something. I never remember the exact name. I know it began with a C, uh -huh. and it made me hallucinate. Oh wow. And I was like. I called the doctor and was like, listen, if I ain't crazy, I'm going on this medication, so I can't take this. <laughs> I'm well on the way. Exactly. Please but, pull me off. Right. So, um, you know, that was my way of me thinking I was managing it. Uh -huh. uh, but I was just in a a place where I slept a lot, like, because I spent a lot of time by myself. So my husband would go to work, you know, he would work 10, 12 hours, and I would get up in the morning, excuse me, and take my kids to school, and I would come back home and I would just lay 
-hmm. all day mm -hmm. until it was time to pick the Mac up. And I spent a lot of that time like sad and crying or angry or trying to figure it out. And then some days when I felt better, because every day wasn't always a bad, bad day of like pain. Mm -hmm. So the days that I felt well enough, I would go hang out with Nick, my brother mm -hmm. Nick, who I call my brother. Um, and sometimes I would have enough energy to be like, I'm coming over to your house and we're gonna go on a walk. Mm -hmm. And I would get there and then I'd be like, I just need a few minutes and then we can go. And then I end up falling asleep on his couch. Mm -hmm. And so he has like pictures and stuff where, you know, he'll send me sometimes like, look at God, like look at how far, you've, far you've come you've from come. this. Right. Um, but it, it's, it's sad a lot of times with depression people don't like to talk about it, but mm. it's more common than not. Mm. You know, we all go through stages of our life where things just don't feel well, mm -hmm. um, which is why now, you know, when people be like, you can't be happy all the time. I'm like, you don't know where I've been. been so, yeah. You don't know, I, I know what it's like to be angry and I know what it's like to be sad. Uh -huh. It ain't fun. Uh -huh. I know that dark space. I don't want to go back there. So I choose joy. Mm -hmm. I choose happiness because I was at a place where I thought I was going to die. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was at a place where I thought I was never going to get well again. Yeah. And I made a promise to God, like, if you get me out of this, I'm always going to choose joy. If you mm -hmm. bring me through this, Wrong and way. I'm intentional with that. I made a promise and I keep it. So, oh. Okay, so you're watching What the Health, mm -hmm. and you get inspired to do the vegan challenge, yeah. or you bring it to your family, y'all do it, and you realize that you feel better. Yeah. And isn't that amazing, though, how God, because I, I think how you don't think about the illness, but how you, the illness was necessary to oh, get absolutely. you to that place, yep. to then take you to this place where you become this national sensation mm -hmm. known for just trying to come up with something to eat because we were just saying something. <laughs> I would love to be vegan if I could just find options. And, and like, I feel like it takes so much thought. Like, mm -hmm. oh, what? Oh, that's got cheese in it. Oh, that's. So, how do you get past that part? Well, I think it, for me, it's, and I always tell people this it starts with your why. Why do you want to be vegan? Okay. For me, it was life or death. Mm -hmm. And my why was strong enough for me to not look at it as hard, okay. but to, for me to look at it as a solution. Gotcha. Right? For me. Um, and if you start with your why, people do it for different reasons. Some uh -huh. people do it because they, you know, they want a little bit, to be a little bit healthier. Some people do it for ethical reasons, for animals, mm -hmm. for the planet. Mm -hmm. Some people be like, well, I just want to lose a little weight, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Um, some people just decide, I, I don't want to eat dead animals anymore. You right. know what I'm saying? So it just depends on... When you put it that way. <laughs> You, you don't want to eat dead animals well, no I'm just more. Saying, okay. Because it's a mental thing for some people. Some people, <laughs> right, they right, were right. like, it, they think about it and they're like, oh my God, I don't, right, right, don't right. want to eat this, you know, this yeah. dead animal, right? Um, I'm just not that kind of vegan to be like, you realize you're eating it? Like, no, but gotcha. that in reality, different people have different reasons. Whatever your why is, is your business. Uh -huh. But if your why means something to you, if it's strong enough, then you'll stick with it. Right. And then you'll be like, okay, let me figure it out, right? Um, and so for me, like I said, it was life or death. So I started having fun with it. I tried to make it fun for myself. Mm -hmm. So I didn't feel like I was missing anything. Rather, I was giving myself something new. Gotcha. And it, it's, it's fun still. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so is the family fully vegan? Because I know- Oh, no. No, still not? They were. They were? Yeah, Choice was vegan. My daughter was vegan with me for three years. Okay. She went back to eating fish and chicken. Okay. My husband was vegan with me for two years. Okay. And he went back to eating fish and chicken. Okay. My so, son, Quest, was never vegan. Oh, okay. So yeah. when you cook for them, sometimes they don't- they don't call you. It don't be. It don't. Be I don't cook non-vegan food anymore. Oh, okay. So oh, they yeah. got to make their own. Yeah. If you you want that, they know they have to order that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, all, everything I cook is vegan. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I stopped cooking like non-vegan a couple years ago. Okay. Yeah. So you're okay. So you making the videos. God mm -hmm. gives you the word. Start making the videos. You're making the videos. They go viral. Mm -hmm. What is? What are you thinking as now? you are becoming this internet sensation. Like, what's going through your head? I don't even know. I, I just was like, this is crazy. When and I so first, what are you doing when companies are starting to reach out to you, though? In the beginning, I was trying to call my friends who had been doing, like, videos and stuff on social media uh -huh. that I knew were, like, very successful. Because mm -hmm. I was like, I, I don't even know what to ask for, uh -huh. how much money, money like, yeah. what to do. Um, and just trying to figure it out. Nobody would help me. Nobody would tell me. Oh, wow. And I was like, Lord, Jesus, I don't know. Why do you think that was? 
it's unfortunate. Jealousy. It ain't, I, you know, I don't know if it's jealousy, but um, I think that the unfortunate truth is in Hollywood, a lot of people are afraid to give you something thinking it, it's it, going to take away lose. from them. Yeah. That's when, why, that's why I can't live in LA. Listen, people it's are, enough for everybody. It, they don't get it though. I, there's never a time, which is why I'm sitting right here with you today, <laughs> that I don't offer myself yeah. to, if my friends call me and say, Tab, this, this and this um, you know, opportunity has come and I've never done it before. If I have the experience, I'm going to give them everything I got. Mm -hmm. God, he honors that, mm -hmm. right? Like we're supposed to look out for each other. That's why we're here together. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that they didn't help me because it just made me even more passionate about helping others. Because yeah. I was like, Man, I'll never do that, yeah. you know? Um, I'm the same way. Uh, yeah. Even like people with a smaller, like, because I do this show, people with smaller shows, if they ask me, I'm always like, even if I don't feel like doing it, I mm -hmm. force myself to do yeah. it because I'm like, I feel like you're sowing into That's other right. People. Yeah. We always can sow. Yeah. We, listen, the other thing is that we don't even know who we are going to be. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, I still don't know who I'm going to be yet. Yeah. This is me right now, but I don't know who I'm going to become. Yeah. I don't know who you're going to become. Yeah. Right? So who you help today... Tomorrow, they may be the very person that helps you. True. So you never know who you're helping. You that don't know when you're entertaining your angel, honey. I believe that. So I always try to look out for people. But during that time, I was just like, this is insane that, you know, I was going viral. and it, it, what's, the, what's the first deal that comes through? Like, what's the first, like, offer this? And you're like, these people want me to make a, a seasoning. <laughs> Well, no, the first deal was Whole Foods. Okay. Because it started with the TTLA sandwich. Okay. Baby, I come to you real quick, honey, real quick. Now, I'm out here trying to work out and stuff, and then, oh, Lord, I got a piece of lettuce on there. Oh, Lord, not on my new outfit. New workout clothes my husband got me. Don't matter. That's how good it is. I stopped at Whole Foods because I said, let me give you a little breakfast, right? Now, I know they be having some vegan options, but, oh, I didn't know that in their deli. Oh my God, they got a TTLA. And that's a tempeh bacon, tomato, lettuce, and avocado sandwich. I already ate one half of it, but good God almighty. Oh my God. Y'all, when I tell you, I told myself, I said I'm going to eat half now and half later. Honey, I got to take another bite just so y'all can see. Okay? Just so y'all can see. Because I'm in, I'm in the car. And I said, let me just eat a little bite of it. Honey, I ate that whole half. I said, well, I'll say the other half for later. But honey, listen. Mm. Y'all. Lord have mercy. Mm. Y'all know I can't sing, but this the baby sing, whole food. So that was, you know, I was driving Uber in 2017. Uh -huh. I ate the sandwich on my break in my uh -huh. car and did a review and was telling people about the sandwich. And nobody was really watching my videos back then, but that was my first video that went crazy viral. Uh -huh. um, and then four days later, Whole Foods reached out and were like, oh, they slid in my DM on Facebook, okay? okay? And they were like, we saw your video, think you're amazing. We love to work with you. And I became their brand ambassador. So I went on to do several campaigns with them uh, for the sandwich. That became like my sandwich. Uh -huh. uh, and then I did like all these plant-based campaigns for them in the store, whether it was for summertime, for the holidays, back to school, all those different things. So I did that for a couple years with them. Hey y'all, it's me, Tabitha Brown. I am here at my local Whole Foods Market. Came to do me a little vegan summertime shopping. Now, I thought to myself, I said, Sarah, she said, what's going on, girl? I said, honey, I might as well take the people shopping with me so they can see what they need to get for the summer barbecue. The produce section of Whole Foods Market is amazing. I mean, look at this place. Child, and they have the widest variety of local and organic seasonal products that I've ever seen. Honey, it's like we in the Garden of Eden. Is that Adam and Eve over there? And then that opened doors for other brands and other companies to ask me to, you know, partner with them and do different things. And so I just kept doing them. Okay, so going back to your acting, so are people now asking you because they just love who you are and they're seeing you? Or are you, they making you come in and audition still? Oh, I still audition. Oh, okay. Now, I've been, I have gotten straight offers. Gotcha. Like when I did so the shot. So the shot, I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, that was an offer. Okay. Um, Lena knew me as an actress first. First. And so I'm so grateful for her because okay. she was like, no, I know you. Gotcha. As an actor. And she knew me as an actor when I wasn't free. Okay. Right? right. And so, and, and and when I wasn't free, that acting tab, she was, she was all right. Right. 
But this so wait time, a minute, explain when you say I wasn't free. Because I wasn't free, so that means I was still trying to be who I thought Hollywood wanted me to be, right? So I was trying to have a certain look and a certain sound. Mm -hmm. um, and when you do that, you restrict yourself from playing. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, I don't care. Right. Now I can really be whoever I want to be in this character. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care what nobody think about me. I ain't trying to be cute. I ain't mm -hmm. trying to, you know, sound perfect. I'm going to just give life to who, you know, this character. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's going to be. So um, when she, she had told me, like in general conversation, like we was on IG Live and she was like, we're going to have to have you on a shy. You know, uh, next season. And I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then when I, I thought it was going to be. Because you've been in L.A. too long to know. <laughs> I was like, all yeah, right, girl. Sometimes that stuff comes through. Right, and sometimes right. it's a lie. <laughs> um, but I, I thought it would be like a cameo. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, me cooking some vegan food or something. I don't right, know. Right, right. Me, me and him up in the restaurant. I'm showing <laughs> some vegan options. I don't know. But when I got it, the offer and it was six episodes, I was like, oh, my God. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm recurring. I, right. I, oh, Lord. So. Um, and she wrote it just for me. Oh, okay. It's, it's like, it was such a uh, compassionate character, mm -hmm. Octavia was, and I was just so grateful for that. But I do still audition. What about I, the Connors? Because I remember when I that saw That was you also uh, an offer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was also an offer, yeah. Louise said to say thank you so much for squeezing me in. Oh, sure. I'm just finishing up my dinner. Yeah, you know, you're you're nothing like I thought you'd be. No beaded curtains, no crystal ball, and you're not all scarfy and jangly like Stevie Nicks. <laughs> She's a doubter, Anne. Oh, well, maybe she gets that from your mother, Beverly, because I am sensing, mm, she's a nasty old buzzer. Mm. Well, see, I think it's so, I, I, I mean, that's what blesses me is because, and, and I hope this is the lesson that everybody take, that being in your authentic self, mm -hmm. who God called you to be, Yeah. that, your gift, which your that is your gift. Even though acting is your love and your passion, your yes. gift is being you. Yes. So your gift made room for you. Yes. For you to be. Come on and pray. Listen, <laughs> I'll do it. Now. Somebody bring me some juice and a napkin. <laughs> I do it, but uh, yes. you know I always want to preach just because they used to get juice in church. You know, that was so stupid. But anyway, <laughs> that's something stupid to talk about. But anyway, yeah. So I just think that's amazing though how your gift made room for you for yeah. the thing that you really wanted to do, and it brought you before all these different people. Yeah. So how have you handled the negative stuff that comes with it, or do you not? I mean, you know, yeah. people had stuff to say about you and your husband, mm -hmm. uh, you you retiring him and. And people probably try to say, oh, your accent and all these other things. Yeah. I know you mentioned that in the book. Yeah. How, like, what is your thought process when this stuff comes up? Like, do I address it? Because I know, I'm wondering, what, what, what are you thinking? Most times, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and, I mean, pretty much I never really care. Mm -hmm. um, but there are certain moments where I will address something, like, in a, but in a message of love, mm -hmm. right? Which you and, always do. And understand it. Mm -hmm. But I know I ain't for everybody, and that's all right. Mm -hmm. But also, I can't allow myself to be affected or upset from comments from strangers of people I've never met. Gotcha. Right? Uh, I, I've seen like some of the worst things. I'm like, oh my God, you know, you must be a very miserable person. Mm -hmm. um, and then I get, sometimes I get very sad for those people, mm -hmm. you know, especially like I was talking about this earlier, you know, I get a lot of comments or, you know, trolls and they'll be like, we know you fake, you can't be that happy. Ain't nobody smiling and happy. And I'd be like, gosh, I can only imagine how sad your life must be right. for you to think that people can't generally be, be happy. happy. Um, and it makes me sad for them, mm -hmm. but people don't know me personally. I can't give them the energy of getting upset. Like you've never met me. Spend some time with me. Right. You know, like I would love to, to take, you know, a person who literally just wakes up and decides to hate on tab and just to hate me just because I'm happy or just because of how I talk or mm -hmm. where I'm from or that I'm vegan. Right. Let's go to dinner. Spend some time with me. Get yeah. to know me a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then place your judgment. Right. But, child, I don't care about them people. <laughs> Look, God bless y'all. As well you should. <laughs> and they can be mad because that's what? That's, that's their, their business. business honey. All right. And it ain't mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you have a new cookbook. I do. Cooking it's called from Cooking Spirit. from the Spirit. Mm -hmm. You don't believe in uh, measurements. That's right. But is there measurements in here? It is not. It's not? <laughs> 
<laughs> so there's yeah. no measurement? It's just, it's, it's, you get all your ingredients, you get the instructions, but I want you to trust yourself with it. You know what you like, you know what you don't like. Put a little bit more to what you like in it, a little bit less of what you don't like, right? Or not at all. But it's really kind of like a guide, a guided cookbook. Uh, that's how my granny cooked, that's how my mama cooked. Right, that's how I cook. Mm -hmm. You know, you put a little bit of that, a little bit of that in there, like so, like that. Oh, it's beautiful. And, uh, thank you. Oh, yes, family. look at them. Okay. And so, um, but yeah, listen, every person who has tried some of my recipes, like from online, I never had measurements there either. And they always be like, oh my God, it came out so good. I'm like, that's because you trust yourself in the kitchen. So, so what's your favorite recipe out of here? What's your? I don't really have a favorite. You know, before I was vegan, People would say, what's your favorite food? And I could tell you instantly it was seafood. Right. Lobster. Oh, how I miss crab legs and lobster. <laughs> um, and now that I'm vegan, I don't have a one particular favorite thing. Right, right, right. I just be liking all the food. Uh, but I would say that, you know, because I have a lot of recipes from my childhood, and my mama's meatloaf is one of my favorite things that I used to eat. Uh -huh. And so I, I recreated that and made it vegan. Okay. So that's in there. And that's one of my favorite things. But then, of course, I love tacos. Gotcha. And my jackfruit tacos are amazing. Okay. So that's in there. And that's one of my favorites as well. Watching and your videos was the first time I ever heard of jackfruit. Listen, honey, I, until I went vegan, I had never heard of jackfruit. But honey, me and so how did you discover it? Because when I went vegan, I was joining a bunch of the little Facebook groups, oh, okay. vegan groups. And everybody was telling And people me. were like, Tab, you need to try jackfruit. And I was like, jackfruit? The first time I tried it, it was disgusting, let me tell you that. I was like, oh, y'all lied to Tab. This ain't it. So how did it become because your they were like Because I bought it pre-made. Uh, and so in a little box, I didn't know if you're supposed to heat it up or what. I was like, this is not it. They were like, no, Tab, you got to cook it yourself. Figure out your way of cooking it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to try it again. But it took me about six months before I tried it again. Gotcha. But when I did, I was like, oh, this is how I'm supposed to do it. And we've been like that ever since. Okay. Well, because this is behind the scenes beauty and I am a hairstylist. Okay. I want to talk about Donna. You know you got to talk about Donna, honey. Look at Donna. Honey. She got Donna to is healthy. Oh, she is healthy. Let me tell you, Donna is fit <laughs> and healthy. Now, what, what is your treatment? How, how do someone get a Donna that looks?